this instructional video uh, is going to show you how to use an incident light reading. This is something that helps you get a better exposure when there are some extremes in your subject matter. And for studio lighting, it is absolutely required. The camera meter that you have makes what's called a reflected light reading. Reflected light reading looks at the subject and makes a decision for your exposure based on reflected light, light that's reflected off of the subject. When the subject is very dark or very light, that tends to fool the exposure. An incident reading with this bulb measures the light that is falling onto the subject and as such can't be swayed by whether the subject is very dark or very light or if there's something very shiny or something like that. Uh, for instance, I'm going to show you a couple of students who are dressed in black and another dressed in white. And as you can imagine with your meter, it can be very, very far off. I've already taken a meter reading on these lights and they say that I should use a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second and an aperture of f5.6. When I meter the young man in the black, I get a much, much slower shutter speed. And when I meter the person wearing white, the uh, shutter speed goes up to 250th of a second at f11. And when I'm done showing this, we'll show the resulting photographs too so you can see for yourself the advantages of using an incident meter. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Here we have uh, a black backdrop and a black hoodie. And for that shot, uh, my camera's reflected meter said I should be shooting at a 15th of a second at f5.6. Now to use an incident meter, we hold it at the level of the subject in the light and press that. And it says I should be shooting at 125th of a second at f5.6. At the end of the video, we'll show you what both photos look like in this case. Now, on to the next subject. Now we have a different subject. The tones of this subject are different. If I do my meter reading with the incident reading, I get the same thing, 1 125th of a second at 5.6. With a reflected meter in my camera, it says I should be using a 250th of a second at f11. That's going to be too dark. We would expect that, but the advantage again is that the incident meter measures the light falling on the subject. Make sure when you're using this that you hold the meter at your subject, point it at the camera, and have it in the light you're using to illuminate your subject. Now let's look at those pictures. To get a better understanding of incident versus reflective, let's look at the results of the shots that we took in the studio. This is the first subject with a black background and a black hoodie and the reflective reading on the right shows us exactly what happens when you do a reflective reading. It tries to make everything middle gray and very badly overexposes the picture. On the right we see the incident reading and just like to mention right up front that I use the same exposure for the guy dressed in black as I did for the guy dressed in white. 1 125th of a second at f5.6. That's the indicated exposure from the handheld meter with an incident reading. One thing that might be confusing about the man dressed in black is that the overall scene looks black. Remember the background is totally black, his hoodie's totally black. As we zoom in on his face, we see the exposure on his face is absolutely spot on correct and that's what we're looking for. The rest of it's supposed to be black and is, and that's what the incident reading gives you. We get a slightly different result when the person has white. Again, the reflective reading tries to make everything look middle gray, just like your gray card. Uh, the incident reading on the right, again, done at the same exposure as the guy dressed in black, 1 125th of a second at f5.6, is the correct exposure. All tones, the background, the white sheet, and his face are, are very well exposed in using that. If we tried to use 
a reflected reading, it would come out way too dark. We can apply that same principle to uh, subjects in other places. For example, outside in the snow. We want snow to be white. Your camera's meter wants that snow to be middle gray. If you have something that's directly lit and evenly illuminated in a variety of tones, a reflective reading works just fine. But for something like the snow that we see here, the incident reading is mandatory. Some other things to always remember when using that, unless you're doing a ratio reading, point the white bulb at the camera. Have the meter, whenever possible, right at the subject's face or at the place the subject is in a still life. Do not stand in the shadow of your light when taking the reading. Make sure that your ISO setting on your light meter matches the ISO setting you've done on your camera. And for your camera setting, use manual ISO, manual exposure, manual white balance, and never ever use auto ISO. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Thanks.